last I left you at the cabin, the garden was just being planted, and now look at it. There's a zucchini starting, and I've got lots of onions, and even have some little wee cherry tomatoes. And I've got a project at hand today, and that is going to be making some more mushroom logs. So I've got some um, an interesting mushroom to um, kind of inoculate today into a conifer log, and I'm also going to make some more shiitake mushrooms. So let's get to it. Got my partner in crime helping me out today, and as you guys can see, I finally got the um, the chest protector from Browning. Previous videos you've seen where he's almost gotten impaled by a stick in the chest. So this is a pretty decent fit. I might tighten this up a little bit. Here I stand, stand, hop, and you can see how it kind of covers his whole chest plate there. It's really strong material, uh, so he's less likely to get impaled or things like that. And um, I've got his Illumicene on the top, so it actually looks uh, looks pretty good. Picked that up at Bass Pro Shops, Cabela's. So my little buddy's safe when he's helping me out in the woods. I'm going to show you here my natural uh, mushroom farm, my Rishi log. Uh, there's a little one that's come out. It's kind of yucky. The, the little grubs have gotten at it, as you can see here. But um, this is a medicinal mushroom here in Ontario. And uh, this one's not in great shape, but uh, over the years I've had some excellent success with reishi and I've did a video on uh, drawing some of this for reishi tea. So as part of the project I need some uh, soy wax uh, once I get the plugs installed in the log. Uh, so I'm just going to melt some over a water bath. This is just a tuna can with uh, that wax in there and I'll bring it over to my work site. The cast iron will keep it nice and warm and melt it for us. You know it's cabin life when you're using a bone to <laughs> stir up the wax. It's almost melted. So the first fungus I'm going to inoculate uh, into log is called bear's head fungus. It's a new one uh, to the channel in terms of mushroom farming. Um, I harvest bear's head fungus in the wild. Um, it's kind of like a, it looks like a piece of coral stuck on a log. And here we have the ones that grow off of deciduous trees, even some living deciduous trees where there is a wound. Um, it has a nice little seafood flavor. It is a choice edible. Uh, but this one from Grow Mushrooms Canada is actually uh, one that grows on conifers. And I've got a lot of conifers here out west. It does grow on, um, you know, Douglas fir and other firs, for example. So right here I've got some balsam fir, and let's take a look. So it has to be inoculated into a freshly uh, sawn log. So this is a tree taken down fresh this morning. It's uh, really crowded in here, so I didn't feel too bad about uh, having this one taken down. Uh, that's where it came from right there. Oh, there's a snake. Look. Hello, there's a snake friend. <laughs> that was not planned. I did not put that snake there. That's pretty cool. It's a garter snake. Awesome. <laughs> so uh, basically, uh, you know, thank goodness I was able to get these this year. Um, they had a forest fire really close to their mushroom farm. Um, and so they got these out, um, you know, before they were, they weren't, I don't know if they were fully evacuated, but they were on the evacuation alert. So I placed my orders and prayed that they were going to be okay. Um, and then to see what would happen with my, uh, my little plug, um, my little plugs here. And thankfully they arrived and I think they're doing really well. Um, so that's a relief for everyone. It's been a really bad forest fire season across Canada. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to get a drill and a 5 16th drill bit and we're going to drill these little guys into the logs uh, about an inch and then you hammer them in and we're going to cover them with a bit of soy wax so that no other things kind of get in there. Um, important to use a freshly uh, cut down log because if you, um, you know, if you use a log that's old and yucky, um, it's got other fungi and other mycelium in there that are going to kind of outcompete uh, what you want to grow. So let's get started. You can see I'm just going along the log here, making drill holes all along it. Um, what I did for the drill bit, which is really cool, is I just kind of um, marked off where the inch line is right there. Um, so that I know how far to plunge this in. I won't go too far and waste my time. Um, you can buy little like jigs for this and stuff like that to kind of make this quicker, especially if you're doing like, you know, dozens of logs. I'm not doing that. But I do have 100 plugs to put in. So this kind of helps me just kind of tick along uh, in my project here. And now we get to the fun part banging them in the holes. So these um these are little pieces of wood that are coated uh, in the mycelium of the mushroom. So this is kind of like the root system as it were of the mushroom. So it will take over this log and break you know the log down over time and it will fruit and give us mushroom uh, mushrooms that we can eat. So um, the uh, bear's head mushroom uh, it looks like a big whack of coral off the side of a log. That one we usually harvest August and November here. So end of summer, into the fall. Um, I usually get it sort of later summer around here, the ones on deciduous trees. So 
um, this might not this is not going to happen this year this is like a future investment so basically anywhere between next season and two to three seasons from now this log could be completely full of the mycelium of the mushroom as it spreads from these little dowels throughout the entire log uh, and we'll get our mushrooms as you guys know the shiitake that i just harvested uh, this spring uh, that log i i put in like two and a half years ago um, so uh, it's going to take time so if you want to do this start now some of the holes you have to clean out a little bit because there's some wood chips and whatnot that get in there but uh, it's pretty easy you just pop them in the hole and tap them in and what you do is just put a little bit of wax over top on a dauber to seal it in let me tell you the bugs they are bad I must say that the uh, black flies are over with but um not the uh, mosquitoes <laughs> mosquitoes are horrendous although um we do have the uh you know, the uh, dragonflies that are out right now getting rid of some of the other bugs, but still, oh, it's horrendous. So anyways, whatever, small price to pay for, uh, you know, this future project. Now and then you can see one of these little grains they've inoculated initially they inoculate grain and then they kind of put them all over these little dowels so it's kind of neat to see the whole process i'd love to tour one of these places um, that uh, makes these cultures it'd be very very interesting something crazy is going on around there some animals getting attacked or something like that robins are going crazy it's like weird noises Maybe someone's trying to rob the nest. I don't know. We've got another robin um, back again, nesting on the back of the cabin. This is like round two of robin babies. So, I don't know. There's something over there. I don't know what it is, but not interested in me, so I'm not too worried. <laughs> I think I figured out what the ruckus is all about. I think there's a broad wing hawk over there. I can hear a pee kind of noise of the hawk. So, uh, unless it's joining in on the action, but uh, I'm pretty sure... Hear that? Yeah, that's the broadwing hawk. So I think they're all worked up. The hawk is in the vicinity. Broadwing hawks are the hawks of the deciduous forest. So they're really beautiful to see around. We had one nesting here for years and years and years. I don't know if it's the same family, but it's probably on the lookout for a meal. And while I'm putting together my own mushroom farm, the chanterelles are coming up. So this is really exciting. My favorite mushroom of the summertime. Well, essentially it is all done. So the log uh, is filled with about a hundred plugs. So uh, we should have some success, hopefully in the next you know, six months to two years, I'm going to think a little bit longer down the road, seeing as how I can't water these logs every day. Uh, basically, the ideal situation is you keep them in the um, off the ground in uh, the shade, and then you water them, especially for prolonged periods of um, if there's drought and stuff like that. Here, I don't have the luxury of doing that, so it's sink or swim. So we'll see what happens, but uh, I'm really impressed so far with how the shiitake is made out. Uh, and hopefully, you know, we'll have many more um, mushrooms down the road. I will go on now to do the shiitake mushroom logs. I uh, harvested an aspen tree today, so it's a hardwood. Um, so basically, you're going to drill some holes in there, same thing, and fill them up with the plugs. Now, the cold strain shiitake I have uh, does take a lot longer, about two and a half, three years before we get fruiting bodies. So I got to kind of think ahead in the future, you know, because the other log I have will go for many years but I need to think beyond that. So uh, it's always good to start doing this now, as this is uh, this project requires lots of patience, but um, when it pays off, boy, does it ever pay off. And here's the aspen uh, that I'm gonna put in the shiitake, and I'll put about 50 plugs per each log. Doesn't take me too long to drill into the hardwood, a lot easier than the conifers that get all, softwood getting all chewed up, but... Uh... Thank goodness, because the bugs are getting really bad. I can barely take them at this point. <laughs> and these guys are done. Just going to put my uh, soy wax on them. Well, I hope you guys have a wonderful week as always. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to leave them down below in the comments. Have a great week. Mm -hmm.